Octavians. It's a brand new work accepted for publication in communication algebra. And uh, let's hear from them firsthand. Over to you, Imran. And welcome. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Usman. Uh, let me just share the screen. Just make sure, uh, just confirm uh, whether everyone can see it. Okay, okay. Thank you, Usman, for, uh, for the introduction. And welcome uh, to everyone in this uh, seminar. So this seminar is particularly about uh, uh, some recent result by me and Shaheen, which is uh, recently accepted in communication and algebra. Uh, this is about uh, combinatorial proof, what we did for G conjecture and particularly for interval sub -deviant. So this is a first tech seminar of its type in the John Conway series. So uh, this is going to be something that uh, initially I will describe the keywords, the background of, uh, uh, of the subject. And uh, afterward, uh, Shaheen will carry you to the statement of the G conjecture and uh, she will describe uh, uh, the development in this particular problem and what we have accomplished. So there are two parts. So initially I will, okay, without uh, taking much of the time. So I will describe the basic definitions, uh, basic keywords, which is needed in order to understand the concept. So here you go. So the first definition is about the simplex. Uh, so by simplex, I simply mean a D minus one. Uh, I, I simply mean a convex hull of D points, but uh, when I'm picking the D points, so I'm, picking those points uh, which are affinely independent. In order to just uh, get an idea uh, what are affinely independent points in some Euclidean space. So it means that uh, if I pick uh, three points, so by three points, I can pick one point as a center so I can make two vectors. So those two vector taking one point as a center should be linearly independent. So when I talk about the, just generalize this result now for D points. So when I'm talking about the D points, you can take V1 as a center and you draw the vectors. So all the vectors uh, which are directed from the point V1 to V2, V3, Vd. So all those vectors should be linearly independent. This is just for those who are not familiar with the definition of a finely independent. So I need uh, D a finely independent point. And then the next thing is the convex hull. Convex hull is uh, uh, a linear combination of all those vectors with the condition that uh, uh, the sum of the coefficient should be is equal to one and all the lambda is uh, the coefficient should be positive. So this is the condition which is, uh, which is this is just the definition of convex hull of uh, D a finely independent point. So this is an uh, of D points. So what diagram I get, what uh, geometrical object I get, I call it D minus one simplex, which is in blue. Okay. So for the simplex, which I just defined, which is a D, sim D minus one simplex. So there are a few terminologies, some dictionaries uh, we call a member, a member of this particular set by mean uh, is that uh, I can take any subset of these D points. So I can take S points out of it and I build this convex hull of those S points. So I call it as a face. So this is another simplex with lesser number of points. We call it a face, face of S. And uh, a dimension of uh, a face is the same as the dimension of the affine hull. So a face of dimension zero, we call it a vertex. So this is just a dictionary uh, on the basis of which we can talk about. Okay, in order to get a geometric realization of it. So for a single point, a linear combination of a single point uh, to itself. So just by looking at the definition, so lambda is, has to be one. So you can't generate anything else. So the summation of the coefficient. So a single point generate can generate itself only. When we talk about the convex hull of two points, so it is a straight line. And when we talk about the convex hull of three independent, affinely independent points, so they can formulate a triangle. And similarly, if I want to uh, have a convex hull of four points, so it means I need three linearly independent vectors. So I'm not uh, in the plane, now I am in the 3D. So ultimately it, I will come up with the tetrahedron. head. So uh, now I'm going to generalize a formal definition, which is uh, a definition of a simplicial complex. So you know the definition of a simplex. Simplex is nothing just a convex hull. So a simplicial complex is nothing but the collection of the simplices. And now we are going to glue those uh, simplices in a systematic manner 
so we glue them in a way that uh, wherever they are intersecting each other that the intersection should be a phase of p and q so in order to view it geometrically uh, this is the way to view it so this is a simplicial complex comprises on the simplices uh, an edge and a filled triangle and then another edge then another edge and then another edge so you can see the simplices separately and they are joined together very nicely that wherever they are joining uh, this particular vertex is also a simplex a well defined simplex in it and in this particular simplex similarly here similarly here so this is a good example where simplices are joining together very nicely this is a bad example this is one simplex this is the other simplex but they are joining in a way that this particular vertex is a simplex here but this particular vertex is not a simplex here which is against the definition this is uh, uh, this is violating this particular condition so this is the definition geometrical definition of a simplicial complex which is nothing but uh, you obtain a simplicial complex by gluing together the simplices in a very systematic and nice way and uh, the second condition it has uh, if you have a simplex uh, belonging to a simplicial complex delta then it means all its sub complexes in other words all its uh, simplices should also be a part of the simplicial complex this is the second condition uh, if this is in delta by mean uh, by saying that uh, this is in delta it means that all the vertices all the filled triangles and all the edges should also be in delta so this is the this is the condition this is the second condition of the simplicial complex so simplicial complex is nothing just a collection of simplices which are joined very uh, joined together very nicely and the second condition is that if a simplex is in delta it means all its simplices which are there all its faces should also be in delta this is the definition of a simplicial complex and this is called the geometric simplicial complex and uh, now in order to study the geometric simplicial complex we associate just like any other branch of mathematics we associate some measures some enumerative data associated to it so regarding to a member of delta just like uh, in vector spaces when we say that v is a vector space and any member of the vector space we call them vectors similarly uh, in a simplicial complex any member of the simplicial complex we call them a face so a face for me is nothing just a member of delta we call it a face and uh, the dimension of a face is nothing but you know the members of delta are nothing but the simplices simplices are nothing just a fine hull so the dimension of a face is nothing but uh, the dimension of its a fine hull and similarly the dimension of a simplicial complex geometric simplicial complex so there are simplices just like in the previous example there are different simplices so the maximum of the dimension of the simplex so you can see that the maximum dimension in this case is the triangle so this is a convex hull of two dimension so the maximum dimension is two so the dimension of the simplicial complex is nothing but the maximum of the dimension of the simplices and now in order to record these particular thing we have a particular number fi of delta fi of delta is nothing but a number of all count all those faces and delta which have particularly the dimension i and uh, in a particular simplicial complex which is a d minus 1 simplicial complex so we have f0 so there will be some zero dimensional faces that mean vertices then one dimensional faces and two dimensional faces then d minus 1 dimensional faces so it is similar to uh, if you talk about uh, a a 10 dimensional vector space a 10 dimensional vector space can have uh, uh one dimensional subspace two dimensional subspace three dimensional subspace four dimensional subspace similarly the idea is the same that uh, if there is a d minus one dimensional simplicial complex so there will be some zero dimensional faces one dimensional faces two dimensional faces and so on so fi of delta basically record the number of faces which are of a particular dimension i and uh, if i collect all these so zero dimensional faces one dimensional faces and d minus one dimensional faces Uh, i got the f vector so there is a one thing which should uh, create some questions here what is f minus 1 of delta uh, unlike the theory of the linear spaces in other words vector spaces in affine spaces empty set is also an affine subspace so this minus 1 indicate that particular simplex which is associated to the empty set so this in this particular case there is always a one uh, subspace of that particular affine affine space or affine hull which is of uh, uh, 
of dimension minus one, we always relate the dimension of m set minus one here. So this is a general convention convention in the theory of discrete geometry. So f minus one is always one. So regarding this particular vector, which records all the f, uh, all the dimension of the faces, we call it f vector. And uh, just in order to study any sequence in mathematics, so a general way is to study them through the polynomial. So by, uh, and one call it the generating function of it. So the generating function of this F polynomial is nothing just a power C sort of thing, but this is a D-dimensional because this is a finite sequence. So this is a D-dimensional uh, uh, D minus. Uh, so this is going to be D-dimensional polynomial, uh, not D dimension, D degree polynomial, I'm sorry for that. So D degree polynomial and uh, the coefficients are written in a reverse manner. So here is an example, don't worry, example is coming. So there is an example. So there is a simplicial complex. So you can see it is quite nice. Uh, in red, there are the vertices, zero dimensional faces. In green lines, they are the edges. And then the blue lines, uh, the blue filled area indicates the two dimensional faces and then so on. So clearly the dimension of this particular simplicial complex is three because of uh, this particular tetrahedron here. So because this is a convex hull of four points and this particular line indicate that this is a three dimensional figure. So this is a three dimensional, this simplicial complex is three dimensional. And uh, if one call upon uh, the F vector of it, so empty set, uh, this one stand for empty set. This seven means seven vertices, seven zero dimensional faces you can see here. And then this 11 mean the 11 edges you can count on. And similarly, this five mean the fill triangle. So this is one and four are here in tetrahedron. And there is one three dimensional face, which is for this particular tetrahedron. Okay. And uh, now I told you that uh, the F polynomial is written in a reverse manner. So this is going to be the coefficient of T4. This is going to be the coefficient of T cube, then T squares, and then T and then one. Okay, regarding to the simplicial complex, uh, simplicial complex, basically this is a very, very important uh, tool in topology. And uh, one very important invariant, uh, which was introduced by Euler at that time, uh, in order to study uh, and in order to characterize the topological objects, because in topology, everything is uh, uh, meant to, okay, you have a topologic, uh, you have a surface. Now you deform that particular surface and the surface take a new shape. Uh, how to describe that this particular new shape and the original shape, they are the same. So Euler constructed that particular criteria, this, which is a very, very important invariant in topology, which we call Euler characteristic. Euler characteristic is a topological invariant and uh, how it works just to see what, uh, what are the ways in order to calculate the Euler characteristic. It depends on the simplicial complex. Uh, so the technique, uh, what Euler introduced is widely used in uh, throughout in uh, mathematics and uh, uh, even in applied sciences. So you have a particular surface here and uh, what you have to do, you have to triangulate that particular surface. And once the surface is triangulated, it becomes a simplicial complex. Now you can see that this is a simplicial complex. And uh, uh, this tri uh, Euler characteristic is nothing but, it is based on when you put T is equal to minus one here. And this particular expression, whatever, it will come up with this particular expression is called the Euler characteristic. And Euler characteristic uh, is an important topological invariant, different uh, topological surfaces, which are not homeomorphic to each other. Uh, they have different Euler characteristic. And uh, moreover, these simplicial complexes uh, help topologists and uh, in geometry, uh, when uh, the second important invariant is the homology. Homology is nothing but uh, it is the count of the holes in that particular surface. So just like uh, this one, this is a hole which is uh, covered by the one dimensional edges. But, and there are some voids. I'm sorry, uh, there is a spell mistake. This is not hole, this is holes. And uh, the void mean uh, uh, you, have, uh, uh, you have a tetrahedron, but this is not a convex hull. It means uh, the interior is uh, eliminated. So this, there is a hole which is, uh, uh, which is protected by, I would say, protected by the two dimensional faces. So we call it uh, a two dimensional homology count. And this is a one dimensional homology count. So homology of a simplicial complex is uh, computable via linear algebra. So uh, the techniques which are widely used in topology is that uh, uh, whatever the topological surface is given, one does the triangulation 
and through this particular triangulation one can uh, make a count of it and there is a whole lot of linear algebra new uh, um, various techniques are there uh, with the help of which one can compute the homology and this is a very very important chapter in topology okay now uh, this is the dramatical aspect and uh, the simplicial complexes can be studied uh, abstractly too uh, just uh, as i started that uh, you started with uh, n uh, d minus 1 points a finely independent point uh, so you can take those particular point as a set so in a set you, you put all those particular points so this is your ground set which is comprises on uh, a finite number of points then what you will do you will collect all those subsets of that particular set which satisfy this particular property that uh, the property is quite simple that uh, if uh, there is a subset is a member of this uh, collection it, it is similar to the definition of topology so when you define topology on a particular set so what you do you take the subsets uh, of the uh, of the power set of that particular set. So similarly, the simplicial complex, F set simplicial complex is uh, you take the ground set and uh, you pick a collection of subsets of it and then uh, you demand that collection of subsets should satisfy this particular property which is given here. And then uh, if uh, this, uh, now I call it gamma and gamma, if gamma satisfy this particular property, then we call it a simplicial complex. This is the simplest definition by using the set theory, no convex hull, nothing else. Okay. And uh, yes, yes, Ma Usman. Uh, would you mind to take up a question because there's, that question is somehow related to the thing that you're doing right now. Okay, uh, how do you triangulate the uh, triangulized uh, uh, surface? Is there an algorithm? Okay, uh, you will see uh, Vakas, this is a very good question. And this talk is particularly about it. You will see in a moment. So uh, just like uh, uh, I, we define the same dictionary in this particular case, uh, a member of gamma, we call it a phase. And uh, similarly, the dimension in this case, uh, because we are in set theory. So dimension here is based on the cardinality of that particular set minus one. And uh, this is the same uh, definition, but you, will, uh, you had seen in the geometry. And the dimension of uh, the simplicial complex is the maximum of the dimension of its faces. And surprise, surprise, surprise. Surprise is that uh, the, both the abstract, abstract definition where you are using simple set theory, nothing else, and the inclusion relation. And uh, the second thing was the geometric one, the convex hull, what I had explained you. Uh, both these definitions are the same. This is the, they are compatible to each other. Now, if somebody would like to uh, study the simplicial complexes, uh, either one can go and study the convex hull, or one can simply uh, do the set theory stuff, which is quite a simple and where the measures are taken care by simple the cardinality of a, of a particular set. And everything is in the finite setting. So our set are discrete and finite. So everything is simple. So this abstract setting is uh, much more nicer to play with. And uh, now this is the time to introduce another innumerative uh, invariant which is associated to a simplicial complex, we call it an H vector. So assume that delta be a d, d minus one dimension simplicial complex. And uh, then we define this H polynomial uh, and there is a trick. And the trick is that uh, in the F polynomial, you replace T with T minus one. And it turned out to be a new polynomial. And the coefficients which are appearing here, these coefficients, this particular polynomial is called the H polynomial. And the coefficient which are appearing in this particular polynomial, we order them in, the, in another way. The same way, the way we label the F polynomial in the reverse manner. So the zero is going to be the coefficient of the D degree term, then D minus one term, and then so on. The, the constant is going to be HD. So this particular uh, vector is called an H vector. And this is a very, very important uh, vector. And many, many problems uh, are in, uh, in the theory of combinatorial enumerative is encoded in this particular vector. And uh, this is a very, very important invariant. And uh, apparently this is a, a sister vector of F vector, you have seen that. So we are getting it from the F vector. Here is an example, again, in order to see, uh, uh, so this is a simplicial complex, uh, which is of dimension two. Uh, the F vector 
uh, if one counts the number of vertices, edges, and triangulation, still triangles, so one can come up with this particular F polynomial. And uh, just you have to put T minus one here in order to obtain this particular H polynomial. And once you have the H polynomial, then you can write the H vector, which is one here, three, one, and minus one. So this is a way to obtain the H vector. Okay, why, what is so important about the H vector? Why H vector? So this, there, there is one more thing which is related, is the combinatorial characterization of the generalized sphere. Okay, this is one of the most uh, uh, important problem in topology as well as in, uh, in commutative algebra. Uh, a while ago, uh, Vakas Ali has asked a question that, uh, okay, how do, how do we do the triangulation? In order to view the triangulation uh, uh, and in order to understand, uh, definitely Shaheen is going to shed more light on it. I would like to um, make, uh, draw your attention into a simple, uh, a sphere of dimension one, that means a circle. And uh, if I, you want to triangulate a circle, so the best way is you need three points in order to view it. So topologically, so it will turn into a triangle. If I pick the three points and then I glue them together. So in the, in the sense, in other words, so my circle could deform so it turn, turn into a triangle. If I take the four points, so it turned out to be a rectangle, similarly five point pentagon, six point hexagon and a pentagon, hexagon, heptagon. And I keep on increasing the vertices. So every time I come up with a, a new polygon, and uh, just to tell you that all those polygons I'm obtaining, these are all the triangulation of a circle. And this is all the, way, this is the way of triangulating a particular sphere. And the more, there are systematic sophisticated way in order to do it. But for circle, this is uh, something everyone can understand. Now the main issue, which is related to the triangulation is that uh, a combinatorial character characterization of the triangulation of a general sphere, the main thing which is uh, limelight here, in other words, highlighted here is a triangulation. And uh, me and Shaheen, what we are addressing today is a special kind of triangulation, what we obtain from a particular method. So it is one of the central problem in uh, combinatorial commutative algebra to characterize, uh, uh, com give a combinatorial characterization of the triangulation of a generalized sphere. So we, when we say that generalized sphere, so it means uh, our sphere can be of arbitrary dimension. And uh, there is a well-known, uh, uh, there is a well-known fact due to Euler. He says that uh, Euler characteristic of a D-dimensional sphere is always either zero or two. So it is uh, quite simple. Again, uh, for circle, I can explain you. So for circle, if you count, uh, I, I pick three points. So it means you get a triangle. So in a triangle, what is the count of the vertices is three. What is the count of edges? It is three. So if I subtract these two, so my F vector is going to be simply a number of vertices and number of edges. So I need to subtract these two, I get zero. So you can see that Euler characteristic, uh, Euler characteristic is uh, zero when D is odd, S1 for S1. Similarly for S2, for S2, you need uh, four points and uh, you get a pyramid and uh, in, uh, not a pyramid, uh, I should say a tetrahedron. And for tetrahedron, just count the number of vertices, count the number of edges. So vertices minus edges, and then you got the two dimensional faces. And for two dimensional faces, you add them. Uh, okay, you add them together. Uh, so this, this is the way to calculate the Euler characteristic. And surprise, a surprising fact is that the Euler characteristic of sphere is either zero or two. For odd number, this is always zero and this is two. And this was a well-known result by Euler characteristic and everyone who has uh, studied the course of course, algebraic topology. So they knew about this particular result. And uh, the second thing is that uh, one very, uh, I, I told you that H, H vectors are very, very important and they play very important role in uh, this particular combinatorial characterization of the triangulation of a sphere. Uh, so you, you pick a sphere, you do triangulation the way you want, whatever the way you want, and you calculate the F vector and then you calculate the H vector. And surprise is that the H vectors are always symmetric. This is a very, very well uh, surprising and well-known fact that H vector will appear just like uh, the binomial expansions are a symmetric uh, sequence. 
in binomial expansion, uh, you can see the coefficients which are coming from here. So one, two, one, one, three, six, three, one. Or uh, this is just an example of a, a symmetry. What I mean by symmetry. So by symmetry I mean either you read the number from here, the sequence, or here, uh, you uh, they will be read as the same. So the H vectors are always symmetric for the sphere, and you do the triangulation the way you want. And this is a very surprising result. And the second surprising result is that uh, they're always unimodal. Again, uh, unimodal mean the sequence rises and then goes down. And again, your binomial coefficient satisfy this unimodality property. And these are two very well. And you can see that uh, these two results, which are mentioned in the bottom, that is regarding to the H vector, mostly regarding F vector has its importance because H F vector's importance is already entertained in the Euler characteristic. The rest of the thing, the rest of the theory is regarding to the H vector. And H vector uh, satisfies these kind of properties. Now, the next thing is geometric subdivision. OK, again, the question which is uh, related to the triangulation, how do we triangulate? How do mathematician does a triangulation of a sphere? And how many ways are there? So there are infinitely many ways. And uh, uh, in order to triangulate a particular sphere, and uh, this is the main difficult part. So the first of the uh, first of its kind, I'm going to try to explain you is the geometric subdivision. So what is the geometric subdivision of a simplicial complex? Uh, assume delta and sigma are two different geometric uh, simplicial complexes. I try to explain it uh, through a geometric aspect. On the same thing can be transferred to the abstract, but in abstract you can't view it. So I, I just try to explain you what is in the geometric sense of the subdivision. I say that sigma is a geometric subdivision of delta. Uh, if uh, you can see that, uh, so the conditions are written here. Uh, this is the original simplicial complex, okay? And its geometric subdivision is this one. And you can see that uh, in geometric subdivision, there are some new vertices. If I just look at this particular edge, so there is a new vertex. And you can see that uh, now this edge is uh, uh, it is containing these two edges in the in the geometric sense. I would say that uh, this convex hull is uh, containing this uh, convex hull yeah, uh, of uh, these three points. Similarly, uh, if I talk about this filled triangle, this is a convex hull of these three points, and this convex hull is containing this particular part. But you can see that there are some new field triangle appeared. Similarly, this is, so the condition is that every simplex of uh, this new sigma is contained in the convex hull of the previous one. So you, uh, so it is a kind of subdivision. You divide the original simplicial complex into further pieces, or you can say whatever you can understand. So this is, uh, this is called the geometric subdivision. Now, what are the questions? which arises with the subdivision, what are the questions regarding to the enumerative data? So the first question which can come up in anyone's mind is that, uh, okay, F vector is a vector, is a, is a D-tuple of positive integers. So the first question which can come up in anyone's mind is that, okay, if a, a positive D-tuple is given to you, can you decide whether this is going to be an F vector of a given simplicial complex or not? How can I say that there exists a simplicial complex whose F vector is this one? So this is a one question which was quite, quite important and quite an interesting and quite an apparent uh, question. And this question was answered by uh, Kruskal and Katona. I mentioned this particular result in order to show you that what kind of questions can arise from a very simple setting what I had explained you just right now. And then, uh, the second question which can arise, okay, I have a simplicial complex, then I have a subdivided simplicial complex. So what will be uh, the relation between the F vector and H vector when I move from a simplicial complex to its uh, subdivision? So this is, uh, so practically it means what will be the transformation matrix which transform this F vector into this F vector. Similarly, what will be the transformation matrix which transfer this F H vector into this H vector? And trust, uh, trust me, these are very, very difficult questions in general, uh, because uh, uh, we are not talking about one simplicial complex. We are talking about all kinds of simplicial complex which are arising from the triangulation and the characterization of the roots of the polynomial. So this is one of the pro uh, problem which was uh, 
this study was also introduced by uh, newton and newton has given many many important results regarding to the real rootedness of a particular polynomial and real rootedness of a certain polynomial particularly the h polynomial encodes many many important information in the theory of enumerative combinatorics what i am uh, presenting you and the characterization of their roots uh, okay if h polynomial of the original simplicial complex has uh, uh, real roots so what about the subdivided one so this is also one of uh, uh, an important question and then uh, when one talk about the algebra so the algebra associated to simplicial complex which is not the topic of this talk is uh, the stanley rational ring what uh, we associate to a simplicial complex so then the next study in algebra started with okay if one algebra has a particular property so whether it's subdivided complex have that particular property or not just for uh, algebra people i'm talking about the coin macaulay books form property and other properties and moreover uh, regarding to a simplex one can view a simplex as a coset structure because uh, i have uh, explained you uh, the abstract definition of the simplicial complex in the abstract setting uh, one if one see a simplex which is x y z so and uh, when i say that this is a simplex so it means all its subset will be a member there so if i arrange all its subset in the in the in a particular setting in an ordering which is uh, just in sets uh, i have only one order is the inclusion order so ultimately uh, all the two are uh, two simplex satisfies uh, this particular coset structure where this arrow indicates that this y is contained in yz this y is contained in xy unfortunately this y is not contained in xz so there is no arrow there so this arrow just simply uh, indicates the containment of a set into another set so by an interval so this is really important uh, what is an interval in a simplicial complex so in a simplicial complex you can see that the containment in an abstract setting the containment is playing an important role it creates a, a coset structure so you can talk about the interval so now this is a kind of interval you uh, what you assume in real line or something so it started with f and it ending at g so it is a similar one but uh, instead of uh, inequality we have the containment because i am talking about the set so for example this is an easy example if i talk about the interval x and xyz so this is your x and this is xyz so all those inter all those sets which are coming in between from x to xyz through these arrows so they will appear in the interval so by interval i mean this one now there is an important definition so our paper is particularly about the interval subdivision so one can divide the simplicial complex through the intervals of the subdivision and let delta be a simplicial complex so now the ground set is that okay you have a simplicial complex you have uh, i have shown you one example one simplex so similarly all the simplices and all the simplices you can talk about all these kind of intervals so you take all possible interval but uh, the condition is that you exclude empty set in the pose set uh, just like uh, so exclude this empty and excluding it whatever this new set is come uh, is coming this new set you call it your ground set now you define a simplicial complex on uh, simplices in the way that uh, uh, every simplex is nothing but a chain of intervals so a0 is an interval a1 is an interval so Uh, by making the interval chain how long you can go and uh, this this simplices this chain we call the faces of the original simplicial complex just in order to show you how difficult it appears so a two simplex is just a triangle when i tr uh, triangulate or in other words when i uh, do the subdivision by using this this above definition this is what i get so this is uh, uh, a demo for you uh that is why i said that the interval sub, uh, that the subdivision sometimes they appear to be very very uh, scary so interval subdivision of a simple triangle is this one and uh, this labeling i uh, i just try to show you okay, how it happened and uh, this interval subdivision was introduced by walker in 1988 and uh, for many years so uh, it was not known uh, the transformation matrix which is sending f vector to f vector h vector to h vector and uh, later on uh, we uh, me and shaheen we come up with this particular result that uh, we show that the h interval 
uh, yeah, so the age polynomial of the interval subdivided sub uh, subdivided complex is uh, has real roots provided uh, that uh, the original has the real roots too. And moreover, in particular, we show that the age polynomial is drop concave or unimodal. model. And ultimately, this particular thing implies the famous Charney Davis conjecture. And uh, we prove that uh, the Charney Davis conjecture holds for the interval subdivision. And uh, where delta is a simplicial complex with a non negative symmetric edge vector. Uh, so, initial, if the initial edge vector satisfies this particular condition, then the uh, subdivided complex uh, will satisfy. This was the Charney Davis conjecture, what we proved. And this appeared in this particular paper. Over to you, Shaheen, now. Okay, thank you, Nan. Uh, so uh, should I should I continue, or no, no, you will share? No, let me share. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Yeah. Okay, you start here. So let me continue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just. So, so I will start with this question, what are possible phase numbers? First phase numbers means what are possible uh, number of phases of a triangulation of this pair. So uh, as uh, uh, Imran has uh, told you about the, uh, uh, the circle, but let me start with the D is equal to zero, which means that your sphere uh, of dimension zero means that you are just considering uh, what is your uh, zero dimensional sphere is just consisting of two points. So this means that in that case, we have just only one uh, zero dimensional sphere, which is consisting of two points. So in this case, number of uh, uh, phase numbers are, uh, is very clear what we are talking about. And uh, now let's ask this question for D is equal to one. So uh, Imran has already uh, told you if you are taking the triangulation of a circle, it gives you number of vertices same as number of edges. So for example, here is you, uh, I have given this one for the triangle and for the square. So if you can extend this uh, number of vertices and definitely it will increase number of edges the, and number of edges in this case, same as the number of vertices. But when you will go to the D equal to two, so you have two dimensional sphere. So in two dimensional sphere, if you will start with N vertices, so what should be that n? So you can see that that n cannot be less or equal to three, right? So 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 uh, so uh, to triangulate a two-dimensional sphere, you need uh, at least four vertices. So for example, if you just consider three vertices, it will not give you the uh, sphere, two-dimensional sphere. So at least you need four vertices. Uh, so. Uh, uh, if you will just consider four vertices, then you can even calculate number of edges, how many edges you are required and how many number of triangles you are required. And here you can use in uh, Euler formula because Euler formula says that number of edges, sorry, number of vertices minus number of edges plus number of triangles must be equal to uh, two in this case, because D is equal to two in our case. So this means that we, if we will start with vertices, number of vertices uh, uh, is n. So we have n vertices. So what we can say about number of edges and number of triangles. So if you will consider this Euler formula, which gives you, uh, gives us F uh, number of vertices minus number of edges plus number of triangles is equal to two. And there is one more thing which we know that if you are considering uh, edge and uh, we are considering the triangle. So we know that the, there is some relation between number of vertices and number of edges as well because three times number of triangles is same as two times number of edges. So you, you can see that we have two relations and we have two unknowns because number of vertices is let's suppose we are not, which is N. So for using this Euler uh, formula, we can determine uh, the number of edges and number of triangles in this case. So here, what will be the answer is answer is that if you are considering the number of vertices are N, then you will get number of edges is at three N minus six and the triangles two N minus four. And this is due to by Euler's formula. Okay, but if you, will, if you will take D is equal to three or more than three, then definitely we, uh, uh, the Euler formula uh, is just one relation and you have here three more unknowns. 
So this means that this uh, uh, number of vertices cannot determine all face numbers in, in these higher dimensional cases. So this means that we need some formulation to see that how it works, which uh, uh, face numbers are actually, or which uh, numbers are actually the face numbers of triangular, uh, triangulation of these states. Actually, this was a question uh, posed by uh, uh, Macmullen in 1970. And uh, he has worked for a few examples. And this is known as the uh, Macmillan G conjecture or the G conjecture, uh, which is formulated by the Peter uh, uh, Macmillan uh, for the complete characterization of uh, F vector of simplicial spheres. So simplicial sphere is just, a, you can see, is it just a, a maybe three, uh, you can consider it as an example, the triangulation of a sphere, right? Uh, okay, so what was the conjecture? And because he proposed some uh, uh, characterization of the uh, of the of those numbers which has appeared, uh, and uh, uh, okay, let me just uh, say what is uh, what he proposed that time and why I have written it it as G theorem. Okay, I will I, I will I will uh, I will uh, 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 tell about this one later. A sequence of non-negative integer f one uh, f zero is just one. And then we have the FD, which means that D plus one uh, uh, vector is F vector of D minus one dimensional simplicial polytop if and only if, uh, because we have this uh, F vector and we can associate, even though if it's not, not F vector, we can associate for every F vector H vector. So this is H vector, which is HI is equal to HDI minus one, which says that your H vector is symmetric one and these relations or these equations are called the then uh, uh, summer while equations because they are uh, they have proved by these two uh, uh, mathematicians. The second condition is that GI, which is HI minus HI minus one is always greater equal to zero. And you have already seen this, uh, uh, this relation. This is the unimodality, which you have already seen the, for the triangulated uh, uh, spheres, right? And the third condition is the important one. Uh, we, uh, we will form this uh, uh, G as a G vector. Uh, it is a Macaulay vector. So if uh, uh, your F vector satisfies these three conditions, then we will say that this is F vector of some simplicial polytop, or if uh, these conditions are satisfied some, by some, uh, some vector, then we will call that H is the H vector of some simplicial polytop. Okay, simply Simplicial polytop is general, general terminology here. We ha you have seen uh, simplicial complexes. In simplicial complexes, you are just taking the affine, uh, 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 depend uh, uh, in affine independent vectors, but here you don't care about the affine independent, you see. I mean, you can have a, a dependent as well. For example, in simplicial complex, you, you have seen that all faces are like uh, uh, edges, triangles, tetrahedron, but here, in, uh, if you will consider just a, um, a sphere that is also a face of in polytop. Okay, what is Macaulay vector? That is important here. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay, so a Macaulay vector is again a consisting of non negative integer and it is also known as M vector. Uh, we will call this M vector if it satisfies this certain condition. We have this uh, expression, if AI can be written in certain expression where NI is decreasing a, a, a sequence, strictly de a decreasing sequence, then AI plus one is less or equal to this number, this specific uh, uh, certain uh, formulation of numbers, because we know that every uh, integer can have this uh, uh, unique representation of the numbers. If it satisfies this condition, then we will say that this M uh, vector. Uh, yeah, uh, because you, uh, I, I, okay, uh, uh, Dr. Imran al already said something about these uh, condition, but he, uh, he didn't show you. Uh, uh, these, are, these are not exactly the crystal cortona uh, relation, but they are just a little bit related to those one, because there was question that if satisfied certain condition, then uh, your uh, vector will be the F vector of some simplicial complex. And here the Stanley proved uh, this theorem, which says that uh, if you have a vector of non-negative integer, it's Macaulay vector, which means that your uh, vector satisfy these certain conditions, then uh, if and only, which means that is uh, in both way, 
is f vector of some multi complex and what is multi complex multi complex is the same as a simplicial complex but here you are not uh, you are taking uh, your uh, 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 you are taking the vertex set as a multi set right so which means that a set which is consisting of repeat, repeating uh, elements so that that uh, simplicial complex on that multi set is called multi complex so this is more stronger condition than the kruskal kothana one okay so now let me say about why why i call that one as a theorem g theorem uh that conjecture was proposed uh, uh, or formulated in 1970 and in within 10 years it was solved by uh, uh billera and lee and stanley so uh the sufficiency sufficiency is given by the uh, billera and lee and uh, their idea of the proof is based on uh, uh because they have assumed that your uh, your vector satisfies those three conditions which i have already mentioned in the g conjecture and they have constructed simplicial polytopes such that a space vector is uh, is uh, uh, is the given vector so the idea is based on this lex order ideal because this lex order ideal is just you have uh, you have the uh, uh, vector with the given data and you can make this lex order ideal and this order uh, ideal will give you a simplicial complex with certain uh, f vector uh, with f vector and from that you will build on your just simplicial comp uh, sim uh, uh, simplicial polytope whose f vector is the this one and this is the reference for this work okay and what about the uh, necessity is given by this stanley in in almost in the same year or you can see that uh, so his proof is not uh, uh, is indeed is uh, is is uh, like uh, 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 complicated because this uh, necessity condition is uh, because he used uh, hoch theory on uh, internet inter uh, intersection cohomology of simplicial uh toric varieties so he used the host theory which means that he has used the uh, geometric approach uh, uh and these uh, 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 toric varieties and uh, uh, the conditions which you have seen in the m vector they are very closely related uh, to this uh, uh, lipschitz property and these lipschitz properties are coming from these har lipschitz uh, theorem and this is the reference for uh, his work okay later on uh, uh, macmullen also gave another proof for the necessity uh, by using purely combinatorial approach via polytope algebra in which he has actually given uh, he has developed uh, uh, hoch theory on the polytope algebra uh, without appealing the algebraic geometry right and that is the reference of his paper okay so that's why that that conjecture is known as g theorem but there are a lot of still questions uh, this conjecture holds for uh, 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 simplicial spheres or not uh, the sufficient uh, sufficient condition is clearly that holds but the necessity condition is really hard, hard to see that it holds or not so uh, so there are a lot of in that in uh, after 1980s there are a lot of work has been developed uh, or, or uh, about this uh, around these g conjecture and about these con g con conjecture so i have listed some few developments uh, so uh, is about the uh, the work uh, for uh, the bedicentric subdomain of simplicial homology spheres which means that you are considering more generalized spheres but you are taking here the bedicentric subdomains of these uh, homology spheres and uh, uh, kubitze and uh, nivo have proved that uh, this g conjecture holds for these uh, bedicentric subdomains of simplicial homology spheres and they have used this uh, algebraic uh, approach which means that they have shown that the lipschitz property in in this particular case okay this is the reference for okay in 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 to, uh, uh, 2012 morai uh, uh, also gave an other proof of g conjecture for the same bedicentric subdomain of homology manifolds but this time he has given the pure combinatorial approach he didn't use any complicated uh, 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 
algebraic property or geometric property. He just used the pure combinatorial approach uh, because uh, uh, the uh, the about the barycentric subdivision of uh, of uh, manifolds. Uh, Welker and Brenty have given very nice combinatorial description about these uh, uh, subdivisions and uh, of of H vectors. And by using those uh, idea, I mean those description and uh, some more uh, idea he has proved this this result okay this is the reference okay adai presito what has done he has done uh, 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 i mean the, he has proved actually this uh, g conjecture uh, in uh, december 2018 and he proved that for all rational homology sphere but his proof is very very complicated even for the specialist in this area and the general uh, concept was built on uh, when people are working on this conjecture they assume that or they 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 they, know, they assume that the most main ingredient of of uh, this this uh, conjecture is about uh, the uh, standard conjectures which are Foncare duality hard lipstick property and the hoge riemann theorem but what he, uh, he has done he has included another hall uh, uh, lehman relations to prove this uh, conjecture and but this is not the end of this thing that if it is proved that then uh, you uh, so people are not people assume that they will not work anymore but still you will see that there are a lot of other people who are wo still working on this one so papa uh, is uh, with his collaborator have has given a simpler proof for simplicial spheres right in in i think this was in uh, december 2000 uh, yes 20 20 and uh, and then we have this uh, uh, we have proved this conjecture for internal subdivisions of homology manifolds and we have also used the pure combinatorial approach which which i will describe later and uh, even though uh, so adai presito and papadikis uh, and Petrotto also proved this conjecture for pseudo manifolds. So they have extended uh, uh, the group or the class of, uh, uh, you can say the class of simplicial complexes where they have proved this conjecture for This is just a recent paper of, of their recent paper. Okay, this is the one, one part of that. Uh, what the development has been done about just the G conjecture. But G conjectures opens many other questions or many other studies as well. For example, uh, in, 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 in 1980, uh, uh, 1998, uh, Isabella Novik introduced this H double vector, H double bar vector to study these uh, homology manifold. Uh, why she uh, used H double bar vector, she actually uh, prove this result that G, if you, if you, she will just uh, shift these H vectors because from here the definition you can see that this H vector is just shifted by some uh, Betty numbers of these manifolds and you get this new H double uh, bar vector. So she proved that this is uh, uh, this has this symmetrical relation for connected orientable uh, simplicial manifolds. So this means that it is nice to uh, ask this question that uh, uh, you have this connection. So we can about uh, talk about here the G double bar vector, which is just the difference of these uh, uh, consecutive H double bar vectors. So here one can ask the analog of G conjecture, this G double bar is uh, M vector or not. And this uh, is known as Klai's G conjecture if, uh, if your delta is orientable simplicial homology manifold then g double bar is m an m vector so uh, okay so um, there again a lot of work has been done but uh, because we are of running of time so i am just uh, giving here my approach our approach uh, about uh, this uh, combinatorial g and g double bar conjecture so uh, in, in this paper we what we have done we have proved these two g conjecture for uh, for uh, interval subdivisions of uh, of uh, simplicial complexes so our proofs are again based on 
combinatorial description of H vector, which already uh, given in uh, given by us in the our previous uh, uh, paper, which uh, has mentioned by Imran, and the technique used by Marai. So actually, in this uh, uh, in this uh, proof, we didn't use any complicated uh, uh, complicated algebraic things. So we just uh, so our approach is just based on these nice combinatorial properties of A. H vectors because H vectors. What are, what are these nice combinatorial proper uh, description? So these H vectors are coming from the Eulerian polynomial of type B. So these Eulerian poly, uh, polynomials or uh, numbers have very nice relation and nice uh, uh, properties. So which gives us that uh, uh, we can prove this this result uh, by these combinatorial descriptions. And even we have uh, we. Have I prove that uh, this conjecture in a stronger version, which means that we prove that actually this G vector of M uh, of uh, sorry G vector of interval subdivision of coin macaulay simplicial complex is F vector of some simplicial complex and hence as an M vector. So uh, it is enough to show that if it is F vector, definitely it will be M vector. So this is more stronger condition of, uh, of the M vector. And uh, we also prove for the same result for the G double uh, uh, a barge conjecture, and here we have proved same as with this G double bar is actually the F vector of some simplicial complex. And here is the paper which is going to appear in communication in algebra. Okay, so if you are really interesting about or you uh, you want to learn more about this G and G double bar conjecture, so uh, uh, here is a, a very nice uh, uh, website. We are, uh, there are a lot of posts about G conjecture. And this uh, this website is by Gil Klai. He is one of the, uh, uh, whose conjecture, uh, I have already, already mentioned Klai's G double bar conjecture. And uh, you can learn a lot of things here. Uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, the Adai Presito's uh, work, but uh, it, of course, it, uh, uh, it is a separate, it should be a separate talk on it and we will hope uh, that we will uh, have some uh, talk on his work as well. Okay, any question? Thank you, Shaheen. Thank you, Imran. Wonderful talk. Okay, we're going to uh, open the session for questions, but before we do that, I have two questions, okay? okay. So one is about the overall talk. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of um, no wise to this idea. So number one, um, the conjecture is for, spheres, the G conjecture, right? So if I understood correctly, the main conjecture is for spheres, yes. right? So, so your result is, 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 is something in the direction of that goal, or if it is, then how significant it is um, in, in, in answering the final question, how far we are. Okay, uh, uh, because you have seen that, is this uh, still uh, this uh, conjecture uh, was solved, by these uh, three guys, but uh, but that is just for this one specific class. The conjecture was still open for larger class for the simply spheres, right? So what we have done, we have uh, uh, we have done this conjecture for the larger class, right? Which was not covered uh, uh, covered in in this part. Oh, uh, uh, Shaheen, right? let me let me just. Let me just uh, jump in in order to uh, just translate this thing in a very easy way. Uh, uh, Usman, uh, you have a sphere and uh, one can do the triangulation in a different way. So one can pick the five points, one can pick the six point, one can pick the seven point, and one can triangulate in a different way. And uh, this was the same question what Vakas Ali Azar is asking that uh, in order to triangulate a particular, because the conjecture is about the triangulation, that all sort of triangulation lead to that particular direction. The G conjecture is about this particular idea. But how to write all kind of triangulation? This is a difficult task. How many triangulations are there? So people try to do one triangulation and similar and one uh, uh, repeating criteria is that okay, I does one triangulation once, and then I repeat further triangulation on what I have done. So my triangulation ke pa triangulation laga de to. So it turned out to be a new thing and again a new triangulation and similar kind of. 
so the issue is that ke we can't grasp the triangulation so triangulation exists as, as, so there is no control there and uh, there are different ways so the idea the basic issue is that uh, uh, that that's why approaching this particular problem through combinatorial approach what we are assuming like the simply the complexes using the enumerative data that is a uh, that is a, a very very difficult problem that is a difficult difficult that's why you have seen that most of these papers and most of these particular results are published in advances in mathematics uh, one of the most prestigious journal because uh, the level of the difficulty is very very high and uh, the uh, the the second thing is that in mathematics this is quite common that uh, if one conjecture is proved just like uh, if one talk about the fermat's last theorem the proof of the fermat's last theorem is like uh, 70 to 90 pages long and uh, you might every one of you might heard of that uh, still people are looking for a shorter proof of that and similarly if one talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra it has very different versions so the main thing what exists in enumerative commentary it's uh, the curiosity is that okay they approach the approach they already applied in order to address this particular conjecture is by using the hodge theory and uh, by using the sophisticated algebraic geometric tool but what about uh, approaching this particular problem in a nicer combinatorial way and addressing the conjecture so this is the same thing what i was uh, writing to vakas ali azhar that uh, okay building new uh, triangulation this is another business and uh, ultimately these kind of things ultimately relate with uh, the wild group uh, particularly uh, uh, the type of the wild group the, the duncan diagrams uh, which is quite common which is completely a different universe uh, which is there but the entries what are coming in these transformation matrices uh, they are really uh, eulerian number they are very very sophisticated data and that's why again the interest still even with the our work the interest in uh, solving this particular conjecture will not die still uh, maybe in upcoming days somebody pick some other uh, subdivision and apply another technique and uh, come up with the combinatorial because once you change the subdivision so the whole dictionary of the combinatorial changes and ultimately one has to build up a new way in order to address the conjecture Right. so we does it we does it only for interval subdivision but uh, one can address for other so for interval subdivision we have done for barycentric subdivision what shaheen has shown Mar uh, by morai and similarly for other subdivision uh, adi pastro has addressed many uh, but uh, let me just add one more thing that recently there is one very important paper which appeared in 2021 by adi pastro uh, athens sidas yeah. Uh, Athens siders and uh, Adai Presito, and there is one more person, and they give a simpler proof uh, for for this conjecture, simpler than the Adai Presito. Then right. Adi Pas. Right, lovely. Uh, thank you, Imran. Okay, I have one more question, and that uh, might sound uh, a bit different. Dif I mean, a bit strange. Because Betty number is something that we use in graph theory, right? So it's something that is associated with the graph. And we have been continuously hearing the word Betty number of a manifold. So that is something new. Uh, I don't know if you have addressed it, you have explained it or not. I would like to know what do you mean by Betty number of a manifold? Uh, again, I, again, Shaheen ke paas kafi ho, sophisticated. I, I try to explain it. Uh, again, uh, the same thing. Uh, Shaheen, can you go back? Uh, okay. So let, let uh, me, uh, 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 triangulation, triangulation. Triangulation, yes, that's why I said that the homology jump is very defined. So it's the same as your graph, but in numbers, you just need uh, to, you can consider here or maybe the Euler's formula. Euler's formula, a simpler okay, one. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, for everyone who is uh, here at the moment, uh, you might heard of the word Betty number, which is coined after the name of Hendrik Betty. And the Betty number is nothing, just a counter. When I say that the, uh, the Betty number beta one of level one, it means कि इस तरह के कितने count पड़े हुए हैं, इस तरह के कितने hole पड़े हुए हैं, one dimensional hole कितने हैं उस topological space में. And how many void are there? जब मैं कहता हूँ ना how many void are there, तो the count of void in a topological surface is called the beta beta two, यानी Betty number of level two. So Betty numbers are basically giving us the count of hole in a particular 
topological surface. This is the easiest way one can explain. And if we talk about the graph, graph के अंदर ये होता है कि graph में जो characterization है, basically जो Betti numbers की जो classes आ रही होती हैं, for all those who are working in graph theory and uh, who have attended the course of graph theory, graph theory was invented by Euler, Euler and uh, Euler introduced it in order to give a characterization of uh, topological characterization of uh, the surfaces. And uh, you can see uh, now look at the thing which is there on the slide. So you can see a surface and the surface is covered by a graph. And now you can do the same. Okay, okay you count the holes in that particular surface. And you can count the Euler characteristic in that particular thing. So in topology, uh, what people do, people first of all count the hole, and then people go and see. Oh, okay, count the hole in one dimension. For instance, uh, here you can see that there is a red triangle in the surface, and uh, at one dimension level, then people go into the higher dimension, see how many triangles were filled or how many remain open. So that is uh, that is the way in order to do it. Uh, there is a sophisticated way uh, in order to perform that particular thing, and we call in topology as a com uh, it as a complex. And uh, in a complex, uh, people calculate the homology in linear algebra way by looking at the kernel and image. The same thing. If you have a complex, a complex is a map. You have one object, then the second object, then the third object, then the fourth object, and the chain of maps is going on. And uh, what it is doing in geometrically, geometrically, we are calculating uh, all sort of triangles, and then we go in the higher dimension and see how many of them are filled, and how many of them are not filled. So that is the image and the kernel. The difference of the dimension is giving me the Betti number. That is the count of uh, the holes which remains to be filled. So in Pakistani so, language, if we call uh, about uh, their, let me just their... conclude. Uh, let me just conclude. Graphs are one-dimensional simplicial complexes. So for simplicial complexes, you can again define the Betti number in a similar man manner for which you have done for the graphs. So it's just the generalization of graphs. So nothing else. Right. So in right. similar manner, you can see these Betti numbers. Interesting, and I hope they are unique, right? The Betty number is unique to a manifold. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Even though, okay. even this is uh, this is this is you this have, is a surprising you have fact. Different uh, triangulation, you but you get the Betty number same. Betty number is the same. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And this, is, this, is, this is this is another beautiful yeah. answer. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, so, any other question or comments? Please go ahead. Uh, Vakas, probably if you are not satisfied, you can come up with with the question. Okay, what was his precise question? Uh, Vakas' question was Vakas? quite quite a general. Ke how can we decide which uh, triangulation is better than the other for addressing no, a particular question? No. Uh, yes, so there is yes, absolutely no yes, way. Yes, let, let me just add something here. Uh, we have some specific class, which is uh, uh, not very old one, but just recently by Ethan Siadia's work is he said about the uniform triangulation. And it says that it said that when you have a vector of this of some simplicial complex and uh, a uniform uh, triangulation, and from there you have some f vector, and their relation is uh, just coming from this linear transformation. So if it is coming from the linear transformation, then such such a, a triangulation is called uniform one. Here you can discuss that about this linear transformation. Ke wo kya hai, what is doing that one? This is one. Uh, one of the class where you you can see that this kind of general terminology but otherwise uh, which one is better and which one is not you can't say anything for example barycentric is very important one barycentric subdivision and it is useful in most of the branches up I, I mean you have seen a, a, a lot of fields this barycentric subdivision but this interval subdivision is very rare very very rare uh, 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 but there, there is a nice application of this one is in the Shiger uh, paper, which is uh, which he has used in in nineteen eighty something. But uh, he didn't give the description in that way, in 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 interval forms. But uh, recently, I have another paper in which I have actually proved that this uh, interval subdivision is same as the Shiger one. 
So even though if you have two different uh, subdivisions, you can't say they are same or not. It's very difficult question. So how you can say that which one is ba better one or not? Uh, let me put it. Very, very, let me put very, it. Uh, let me put it in an in, in this way. Just like uh, in topology, the hardest question is to decide whether the two topological spaces are homeomorphic to each other. So this is uh, uh, to see whether you constructed a new triangulation. Is it the same as this one, uh, which is already existing? This is a similar difficulty level question, just like in topology. This is really very difficult to say whether the two topological spaces are homeomorphic or not. That's why people constructed these uh, invariants like Euler characteristic, then homology, then cohomology, and all these invariants are used in a negation way. So mostly people use it for negation. Okay, these two topological spaces have the same Euler characteristic, but I can't say they are homeomorphic. But uh, when these two topological spaces have uh, uh, Euler characteristic which are not the same, then I have a pet answer that uh, they are not homeomorphic. So these are these are the tools in topology. But, but are used for negation. when you are given two sim uh, two subdivisions, you can't use this thing because these two subdivisions, uh, you don't know whether, but you know that these are two different subdivisions. Uh, uh, then uh, then uh, you can't use this thing because uh, they are homeomorphic to each other. Yeah, topologically they are homeomorphic. Yes, they are homeomorphic. But so combinatorically they are yeah. different. This is this is another this is another dilemma here. <laughs> so you pick the two different uh, triangulation, you calculate their Euler characteristic, Euler characteristic is the same because uh, you are triangulating the same surface according to Euler, no one else. So there is there is uh, no point ke, okay, even topology ke tools are not going to help us. So this, that is a very difficult thing. And the problem of uh, isomorphism in uh, the theory of uh, uh, subdivision, this is uh, very, very difficult. It is one level up. And uh, I, I think Shaheen has uh, proved something regarding to the isomorphism of two trying, uh, mm -hmm. different uh, subdivision in her recent paper. And that was uh, very, very complicated. Very, very complicated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Imran. Thank you, Shaheen. Any other question or comment? Please go ahead. If not, then let us thank the speaker. Thank you, Imran. Thank you, Shine. Wonderful talk. And good thank luck. Thank you, everyone. For thank you, everyone, conference. for your patience. <laughs> and and uh, this is for uh, this is first tag seminar. And uh, I hope uh, in future there will be many where no, people. Right, yeah. Even, yeah. yeah. I idea. hope uh, it will not bore you. <laughs> no, so wonderful. You, you don't have to see one speaker for, for the whole talk. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah we'll thank you. you uh, next week with another exciting talk. Uh, I don't know which one yet, but we'll see you soon. Ah, uh, let me just open up the uh, poster of the next Alicia? week talk. This is uh, by Alicia by Alicia. Alicia. Yeah, Alicia. Yeah, uh, let me just, uh, uh, Shaheen, uh, can yes. you stop sharing? Ah, yeah, yeah, yes, sure. Dr. Suman? Yes. Ji, Vakas, can I ask something? This question. So is it too difficult to, to develop a combinatorial way to show equivalence of two subdivisions, two different subdivisions, or is it impossible? To say that two subdivisions are equivalent in some. Very good question, Usmukas. Very good question. Shahin is the best one to answer. It. Yeah, it's it's uh, okay. So, for example, if you have uh, the f vectors are different, if you know and you know that their f vectors are different, if their combinatorial data is different, then definitely they are different. But still, if they have they have the same combinatorial data, still you can't say that they are same or not. They could be different one. Okay. Vakas, okay. did you get it? Did you get it or not? Okay. So hota my question is aap... not about uh -huh. this, the same. Uh, oh, okay, they are different. If they have different f vectors, they are different. My question is that uh, do you have equivalence in some other form? Like, I don't know. Equivalent, equally something equivalence, else. Equivalence thing. You need to prove that they are homeomorphic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Shaheen, just... Shaheen put it in this yeah. way, combinate, yeah. his question is about combinatorically equivalent. Okay, agar, 
मेरे पास दो मेरे पास सब डिवीजन है और अगर तो एफ फैक्टर ही डिफरेंट आ गया तो क्लियरली दे आर डिफरेंट टोटली फिटर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट है एंड अगर एफ फैक्टर सेम आ जाता है तो देन वो कास्ट क्वेश्चन इज के उस केस में हम कैसे एड्रेस करेंगे बिकॉज़ दैट इज अ वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन के उस केस में आप उसमें ओके उसमें यू नीड टू सी दैट एवरी फेस आई मीन एवरी फेस जो भी डायमेंशन आप उसकी कंसीडर कर रहे हो इज देयर इज अ बाइजेक्शन बिटवीन द अदर जो भी आपने सब डिवीजन लिया उसके फेसेस के साथ उसकी ये एग्जैक्टली exactly ये ग्राफ थ्योरी का क्वेश्चन बन जाता है जैसे ग्राफ थ्योरी में नहीं होता कि आप एक-एक वर्टेक्स और फिर एक-एक एज से रिलेवेंट आप बिल्ड अप करते जाते हो तो यहां पे एक-एक फेस से रिलेवेंट उसकी जनरलाइजेशन यानी ग्राफ आइसोमोर्फिज्म की जनरलाइजेशन सो 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 लेट मी से इन दैट बट दैट वन इफ यू हैव टू सब डिवीजंस एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू से दैट दे हैव द सेम वर्टेक्स सेट राइट so you have the bijection between the same of the vertex sets and then you need to go the further step if this is a face here in one subdivision then their image must be here a face and they converse as well like in the continuity part so aap continuity mein kehte hai na you need a bijection right between two topological spaces and you are taking here uh, something an open set which is must be an open whose image is must be open in the other space and the voice versa but this we aane aapne bilkul same is tarah aap open set ki jagah aap just consider kar lo faces hai that set okay i hope, uh, so. I hope <laughs> this answers your question so. okay <laughs> Next seminar is by Alicia Dick uh, Dickstein. She recently won uh, the award by UNICEF as uh, Woman of Science. Ka, or secondly, she is uh, our first speaker from Argentina, from Buenos Aires University, and uh, she is going to tell you something very very interesting because uh, she is a SIAM leader too. So she is going to discuss about algebraic geometry tools in system biology. So how you can apply algebraic geometry in system biology. so i hope uh, everyone will be excited about knowing the application of algebraic geometry in system biology that's it uh, the advertisement of the next seminar okay over to you smart sounds fun thank you very much iman thank you very much shine once again and thank you thank you everyone for participating and we'll see you next week again with some system biology and algebraic geometry until then take care thank you thank you thank you